I don't know why every YouTuber, when they make a video, like, about some serious shit, whether it's, like, an apology or some shit that they, some real shit they speak on, they always want to jump on camera looking busted, like, no makeup, no lashes, like, hair in a ponytail type shit. I'm not that person. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to still get cute, and I'm going to still talk to y'all about this real shit. But then again, I feel like only YouTubers who are putting up a front kind of do that type of shit. Like, they're like, oh, I'm talking to y'all about some real shit now, so let me look real. But y'all know I keep it real all the time. What's up, y'all? Today, I am back with another video, and I'm going to just jump right into what I have to say. Um, I don't really want to waste too much time on, like, an intro or anything like that. I feel like the title is pretty descriptive of what i'm going to be talking about and i also want to get this video hurry up and get it uploaded because there is a call to action um at the end of the video and it's time sensitive so i'm gonna just go ahead and um get right into what i'm talking about so that i can explain a little bit about the call to action at the end of the video for those of you guys who don't know if you haven't been on social media or if you just don't understand what's going on basically what has happened is the supreme court has voted to overturn the Roe versus Wade, um, which means that a lot of women in the country will no longer have access to safe abortions because they are going to outlaw them. Um, certain states are making abortions illegal. And in addition to that, they're also trying to illegalize uh, contraceptives as well, such as like Plan B or um, One Step or whatever morning after pill you use, they're trying to make those illegal as well. The government is basically using women's bodies as a political playground. I definitely do not fuck with that, but this in particular, um, it just hit home a little closer for me because of a certain situation that I dealt with. Um, I wanted to tell this story on my channel for a minute, but I just didn't really know how to go about doing it. Or, um, I mean, y'all know I don't really give too many fucks about backlash, but I just didn't. I don't know, like it just didn't feel like the right time. But with everything that's going on, I just want to explain my story um, with one of my abortions. And I want to explain why banning abortion um, is very problematic, number one. Why it's very dangerous, number two. And number three, why it's going to ruin a lot of people's lives. We cannot let this happen. Um, we can't let this happen. I was put in a situation where I felt like, you know, I needed to get an abortion. And I'm going to explain what happened. Um, long story short, I was seeing this guy. And... You know, shit was cool. Everything was cool. It's always cool in the beginning, right? Like, everything's always cool. Um, we were hanging out. We were talking. I wouldn't say we were together. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. But I was staying over his house. We would hang out. And as normal people who are dating... Well, I don't even want to say dating. Like, we were just... We were fucking with each other. We were fucking with each other. We were talking, hanging out. And long story short, we end up having sex. As normal people do. It's not no big thing, right? So, me personally, when I was talking to this guy, I made it very clear that when we were having sex, you know, I wanted to use protection just for my own personal reasons. You know, like, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain that to him. Um, based on what we were talking about, like, he would talk to me about his traumas and his past, and I would talk to him about my traumas and my past. Um, I felt as though he understood where I was coming from, and that's also another reason why when he did what he did, I was really, like, blindsided. I didn't understand the point of what he did, <laughs> but I'll get into that in a little. Um, but, yeah, we were talking, like I said, getting to know each other. I met his family. Um, I had met some of his friends. Like, we would get drunk together, go out, like just regular normal stuff that people who are dealing with each other and who are talking to each other would do. So of course over time, like I'm building trust for this person. You know what I mean? Like I'm building trust for this guy. I'm thinking that we have something going on or that we're at least locked into the point where he went and do what he did to me. Um, but I was wrong. So eventually dealing with this guy like like I said things were cool at first but going on um there were little things going on that were kind of like red flags but it wasn't enough 
for me at the time to be like, oh, I just want to stop dealing with you altogether. Now, definitely, I would have left this guy alone as soon as I saw these red flags, but me back then, I was just kind of like trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and stuff like that. Yeah, I noticed when he would get drunk, he would make a lot of like comments that were homophobic. He would make a lot of like misogynistic comments, misogynistic jokes. Um, he did make a couple of jokes about assault, like sexual assault, but I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because again, like I said, he told me things that he had dealt with in the past and I'm thinking like, okay, well maybe, you know, humor helps some people with their trauma and stuff. I know I joke about abortion all the time. It helped me with my trauma, but I don't know. To me, it just did make me uncomfortable. I should have paid more attention to it and I didn't. Yeah, over time, like things had just kind of changed. Like the, he was just acting a little off, but you know, I was still kind of fucking with him. We were still hanging out and stuff like that. And one night we were at his house. I was really drunk. That's the reason why I ended up actually staying at his house because I was drunk and I didn't want to drive because his neighborhood, like it's a lot of police out there because it's kind of a fucked up neighborhood. It's a lot of police out there all the time. I didn't want to drive home drunk. So I was just like, hey, you know, can I stay with you tonight? I'm drunk. Let me just stay at the crib with you tonight. And he was like, okay. Um, he wanted to have sex. And so I was like, fuck it, you know, not, no different than before. We're having sex, everything cool. Stuck to my rule, like I did not want to fuck this guy without a condom on. I did not want to have unprotected sex with him. I didn't, and he knows that. Like he knows that the, that was my only rule. Like I did not want to have unprotected sex with him. If, he, if we were gonna have sex, a condom needed to be involved. Otherwise I was not having sex with him. So when we first started, having sex at that time I don't want to say too much because I don't want YouTube to ban me but when we first got into you know what we were doing he had a condom on and it was dark in the room I was super fucked up and when we finished he did not have a condom on and I was like where's the condom he told me he took it off and I was just like what the fuck you know like what the fuck? <laughs> you know that I said I didn't want to have sex. I didn't want to do anything with you unprotected. And you took it upon yourself to take the condom off. What What the fuck? So I'm sitting there like shocked. Because in a way I did feel violated. Because that is, if y'all don't know, that is sexual assault. So I'm sitting there just feeling like dumb violated. Because you knew my rules and regulations. And you decided to do that without my knowledge. And... Now we're in this situation, but what led me to be in the predicament that I was in was because he said, after I found out that he didn't have condom on, he just casually wanted to say that he inside of me, like, and then started laughing. Like he thought it was a joke, thought it was funny. So I'm like, that's not funny. That's not cool. And so I immediately start looking for where I can get contraceptives, like, you know. I looked at um, Planned Parenthood, I looked at like some pharmacies or whatever, but I was basically at the time, I was trying to find the cheapest option because when we had the conversation, he made it clear that he wasn't gonna go half with me on it or, or buy it, like I was gonna have to buy it myself. So I was like, all right, I'll get it. Cause you know me, I'm a very much, I'm very much a by any means necessary type of person. Like if you're going to help me get out of the situation, okay cool if not then I'm gonna do it myself and that's what I did I took matters in my own hands and I went to go um get the pill or whatever which even though it wasn't successful um I still had a choice you know what I mean I still had a choice to go and get a contraceptive stick a pin in that um yeah so anyway took the pill Thought everything was cool. Uh, two weeks or three weeks later, I'm like, damn, I missed my period. What's going on? So I went to Walgreens, um, bought a pregnancy test, and that's when I found out that I was pregnant. Um, as soon as I found that out, I texted him. And I'm debating about whether I want to put these screenshots here or not because I don't want to... Um, 
start any drama. Like, that's not the purpose of this video. I, I don't want to start any drama. I've already come to terms with what happened, and I'm all right now. I did go to therapy, and I'm okay now, but I don't want to start any mess, but I am debating on whether I want to post the screenshots just so y'all can know what type of person I was dealing with. Um, I told him that I was pregnant, and his first response to me was, well, I can't do no other baby, so, you know what I'm saying, like, it was really rude, really abrasive, like, it was just very cut and dry, like, I knew he didn't want to have a kid, I mean, I didn't want to have a kid, I didn't want to have sex without a condom, so I definitely didn't want to have a kid, but, um, he was really just real rude about the whole situation, a lot of people, like, Y'all might ask, like, well, if this guy assaulted you, why were you having a conversation with him about this, that, and the third? Like, why weren't you just not talking to him? A lot of these things, when it comes to assault, I do want to point this out. A lot of these things aren't cut and dry. You know what I mean? Like, I have been assaulted by some people who I will never speak to again. And, like, this, now he's one of those people. I will never speak to him again now. But at that time, like, I was still confused about what was going on. I was scared and he was the person who got me pregnant so it's like at the very least you could help me out in the situation or like you know what I mean like I just I, I, don't, I didn't expect this to go down the way that it did but it did um but I also don't want people to get it confused and feel like I wasn't really assaulted because I went back and spoke to this person a lot of victims deal with their assault in different ways that doesn't make the assault any less valid. You know what I mean? So, and like I said, that's up to the victim about how they choose to react. Some people don't want to talk to their abuser at all. Some people end up, you know, becoming cool with their abuser again, or they end up being able to get over that situation somehow. Oh, in that time, I, I didn't know what else to do. I was just like, bro, you got me pregnant. Like, what the fuck? So, after I found out that I wasn't, bottom line, going to get any help from him, um, again, I took matters into my own hands, and I signed up to go get an abortion. I paid for it myself, I went there by myself, and I came back home, and, you know, that was that. It wasn't really too much, uh, I mean, I was sad, but it wasn't really too much an emotional thing for me. I wanted to just hurry up and get it done because honestly, I didn't even want anybody to know that I got pregnant again. So yeah, like I was just, I just wanted to hurry up, get it done. Um, I didn't want a baby with this guy. Like why would I want a baby with somebody who took it upon themselves to assault me? And yeah, like that was just that. I, I texted him. I told him what I was doing. I didn't get a response. And I tried to keep him updated throughout the process. I guess I was just trying to communicate what was going on. I don't know. Like, going back, I don't even know what I thought I was going to get out of that. I don't know why I thought he was going to have a change of heart or apologize or anything like that. But, um, yeah, horrible, horrible situation, right? Horrible situation to be in. And I say all that to say, you know what I mean? The only reason why I was able to get out of that situation is because I had access to a place where I was able to get a safe legal abortion. Otherwise, right now, I would have a toddler running around whose father is somebody who sexually assaulted me. And like to say that sounds crazy, right? But it's the it's it's what we're going toward. It's literally what we're going toward. Um I saw a clip the other day of a lady, she was riding around on a bicycle and she had like two, I think they were twins, but they were like two brand new babies and she had them in a milk crate uh, on the front of her bicycle. I don't know if she was like taking the baby somewhere like to leave them or like um, to try to give them somebody who could take care of them, but long story short, it was clear that she wasn't able to take care of the babies and she did want to get them help, but she wasn't able to take care of them. Also, again, I say all that to say this is the country that we're moving toward if we make abortion illegal. If we don't have access to safe abortion clinics, if women can't get abortions, first of all, women will die. 
Because just like I said earlier um, in my video, I'm very much a by any means necessary type of person, right? There are other people in this world who are very much by any means necessary type of people. And if they can't get access to a safe abortion, um, a clean clinic with a real healthcare provider, then they're going to go about it other ways. And I, I hate to say it, but that's going to be the case. And a lot of women are going to die because of this. Also, there are other situations, not even, because at this point, I mean, I do believe, right, that even if you have sex with a guy, unprotected sex, and you get pregnant, and you don't want to have the baby, I, I believe that you should be able to have an abortion. You know what I'm saying? Like, people might say that's irresponsible or whatever, but I think it's more irresponsible to bring a baby into the world when you know you can't take care of it. That's just how I feel about that. Me knowing myself, like, I know I don't need to be a parent. I know I don't need to be a parent. That's just me being transparent and real, right? I got enough going on as far as my mental health, like, just things that I want to do as far as my career and stuff. I'm way too focused on. And sometimes, due to my own mental health, like, it's hard enough taking care of myself. You know what I mean? It's hard enough dealing with my own self. I cannot imagine having to split my already, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would have to basically cut everything in half, but not even in half because when you have a child, that's supposed to be your life now. You know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to pour everything that you can into that child. And a lot of people just can't do it. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm built for it. A lot of other people don't feel like they're built for it. And while people might say that that's irresponsible, I disagree because I think it would be more irresponsible for me to have a child or bring a child into the world that I know I can't take care of and that I'm not ready to take care of. It's expensive as fuck to live right now. We're in a recession. You know what I'm saying? I'm a stripper. I'm going to keep it a stack with y'all. Strip clubs is dry right now. Shit is going to shit right now. Gas is $5 a gallon. Y'all banning abortion in a country where we're already having a formula shortage. You know what I'm saying? We're still kind of in the pandemic. Like, it's just so much shit going on in this world. And I don't blame anyone who wants to have a baby right now. But at the same time, I understand this is not really the time to be having a kid. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just not. And by doing that, like I said, women will die. Women will be forced to have children with men who um, assault them, rape them, all types of crazy situations. There's also cases where women also, there, and there are also cases because when I got pregnant, I found this out too, that there are women whose pregnancies are not going to go like normal. And there are situations where women will get pregnant. There will be complications with the pregnancy and either the baby will die or the mother and the baby will die. So it's like, what, what, what in that, in that situation, what are we supposed to do? Will we be, will we be chastised or punished for not having a baby or choosing to have a procedure to not have the baby when we know that if we do have the baby, like we could die, the baby and us could die. Like it's just so many variables that go into this that I don't think are being discussed. And the last and final reason is it's just, it's not your body. It is not your body. Members of Supreme Court, I don't know if y'all know this, but they are not no young, um, progressive individuals. You know what I mean? And I also, I feel like it should be a time limit on the amount of time that you can serve on that board or in that position. Because why are old white men primarily making decisions about what I can do as a 25 year old black female with my body. Like a lot of this just doesn't add up. And I know for a fact that my life would be way totally different if I did not have access to plan B, if I did not have access to safe abortions, if I didn't have access to the things that I need to take care of myself because these guys are not gonna do it. As we see, these guys are not gonna do it. They're gonna do what they wanna do. And of course, once you get pregnant, it's always another story. Once you actually get pregnant by somebody, it's always another story. You know what I mean? The guy isn't guaranteed to help. Then what? 
What if the terms change? Like in my situation, at first he was nice. Then he was acting crazy. I should be forced to have a child with somebody like that? That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And it makes me upset talking about it just because I know I've been in situations, I've heard of situations, and I know situations where guys are just taking advantage of women. I've been taken advantage of. And the outcome of that is not cool. You know what I mean? This is not um, something that's easy for me to talk about. It's easy for me to talk about it now, and I'm just saying it so fluently now because I just, I've come to terms with the situation. But at that time, that situation really had me fucked up. And I can only imagine how a woman would feel if they were in that same situation and they did not have access to a plan B. They did not have access to an abortion. Like, even though the plan B didn't work, I was still able to get one. I was still able to do what I needed to do to protect myself. The government is taking away women's rights to protect ourselves. And one thing that I really don't understand, like I told y'all, I'm a stripper, right? And I'm gonna just keep it all the way real with y'all. These government officials, um, I don't know what y'all think they have going on. I don't know what they think they have going on, right? But these government officials um, definitely get into these relationships and have relations, illegitimate relations outside of their marriages, outside of their relationships, stuff that the public doesn't even know, right? How much do you want to bet that their mistresses and the girls that they are sleeping with um, the sex workers that they are sleeping with, because it does happen, how much do you want to bet that they'll still be able to have access to an abortion when they need it? Because those situations do come up. There have been situations where government officials and these high-ranking politicians, these white men that are in office, have come up and been in these scandals, you know what I'm saying, cheating, stepping outside their marriage it happens and a lot of the time they pay these women to get rid of the babies they pay these women to go and have these abortions so i'm trying to figure out what they think like what what is the tea like i don't i don't get it my hair keeps getting my face but i don't understand like and i guarantee like i said they're gonna have access to get the procedures that they need safely because they don't want that ruining their picture perfect American Barbie dream life. You know what I'm saying? So if they were to ever get into the situation where they got a stripper pregnant or a, um, I'm not gonna say the words, I don't want my video taken down, but a 304 worker pregnant. If they were in the situations where they got one of those girls pregnant, how much you wanna bet that not only would they have the access to get a safe and um, healthy abortion done, but it'll be taken care of real swiftly. It will be taken care of real swiftly. So I'm not understanding, like, are the rest of us not as important because we're not fucking a government official? Like, I don't, I don't get the thought process behind this. Where do y'all think this is going to take us as a society? Nowhere good. It's not going to take us anywhere good. I can tell y'all that much. So, um, like I said, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to share my story with y'all to make it a little more personal so that y'all can understand kind of where I'm coming from with my stance on the issue. But also maybe it'll help you guys understand that like stuff like this does happen. I know a lot of y'all don't know me in person, but you see me on the internet and you see me on social media and you watch my YouTube. And hopefully me telling this story will help y'all understand like stuff like this does happen. And, and the only reason why my situation wasn't more horrific was because of the fact that I was able to protect myself. Uh, by having that procedure done. But the decision to make that illegal, to make abortion illegal, I just, it's just gonna be chaos. It's just gonna be chaos. And I don't think that all the things that need to be taken into consideration are being taken into consideration, are being taken into consideration with uh, the decision that they made. I don't understand it. It's very hurtful to see because I know what it feels like. And I just, I can't imagine living in a society where it's been outlawed for me as a woman to be able to protect myself. I just can't understand that. Um, with all that being said, like I said, there is um, a call to action that I would like for you guys to participate in. 
Um, if you are in the Virginia area tomorrow, there's going to be a demonstration at Utopia Finney. I'm going to be there sharing my story. You know, again, I just wanted the first time that I share my story, I wanted it to be, you know, with you guys. But I will be telling my story again at the demonstration. And if you would like to come out and support male or female, because it is going to take both of us to make this work, um, come out, support. It's going to be at Utopia Finney, uh, Virginia Beach from 4 p.m. I believe to 9 p.m. We're going to be telling stories, making posters, just bringing awareness to the issue. No, they did not tell me to post it. They did not tell me to make this video. I'm doing this out of the genuineness of my own heart. So yeah, if you watched this video and my story resonated with you, or if you've been through something similar, or if you just want to pull up and support, um, please pull up and support. We need all of the support that we can get. I'll be there, like I said, I'll be sharing my story and other people will be doing the same thing as well. Um, hopefully this video kind of puts things in a perspective for people who don't really understand what's going on with this issue. This is also my first time doing like a video this personal too. So shout out to y'all for being y'all and I guess giving me the platform to talk about stuff like this. I will see you guys at the demonstration tomorrow. Y'all be safe and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.